If you're a regular watcher of this channel, then you know I love finding uses for old Apple stuff. You know that Apple put a lot of quality and a lot of craftsmanship into their things when they made them, even if it was almost 20 years ago. For example, this 23-inch cinema display here, which originally cost $2,000, which in today's dollars would be closer to $3,200, and on the right here, we've got the 27-inch Senate display. And this one's only about 10 years old, but it still works great, and it's still one of the best monitors you can pair with your Apple computers. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use this old technology with Apple's newest Mac Mini. And of course, this will work for other Mac devices like the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air. And be sure to watch all the way to the end because we're going to try out one more thing just to see if it works. But let's go ahead and get started. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be playing around with this new Mac Mini M4, and we're connecting it to, as you can see, some older monitors here, the 23-inch from 2005 and the 27-inch from about 2010. And in this case, these are both the cinema display models. We'll talk about the differences of some of the other monitors that they had, like the Thunderbolt display. And I've done some similar videos like this in the past, but I wanted to update it since this Mac Mini is just an awesome, very powerful, and very affordable computer right now. So I'm going to take you through the steps to get these connected, and I'm going to talk about some of the caveats of what works and what doesn't, and how to get everything to work that you want to work. And we're going to start off here on the left with the 23-inch Apple Cinema Display. Now, as you can see, I've got a bunch of cables underneath here, and I didn't tidy them up because we're going to be breaking them out and looking at everything that's needed to make this work. But on the Mac itself, you can see there's only a couple connections here, and we'll talk about what they all are and how they all work. So like I said, we're starting with the 23-inch cinema display here. So on this particular model, it comes out with a DVI. They call this the DVI model of the monitor because older versions of the same monitor had different connections, the old Apple Display connector, I think it was. But if you've got a DVI connector, that makes it somewhat easy. So all I've got here is just a USB-C to DVI adapter, and I'll have links to all these down in the description below. They're not very expensive. You can grab them off of Amazon, and I'll link the ones that I purchased, and I know that they work, because sometimes you don't always get one that works, and I know it's a hassle to return and try out different ones. So these right here, I promise you they're working. So like I said, I've got on this side USB-C, on this side it is DVI, and you plug it in, it just works. Now this particular monitor has some other connections to it. It had a FireWire connection, probably not widely used by a lot of people anymore, but we don't need to worry about that one. And there's also a USB connector on here, and if you use this, I think you can use the hub on the back of there, but it's not really needed for anything else because this monitor doesn't have a built-in camera, and it doesn't have built-in audio. Now the good thing about the audio is the Mac Mini M4 has actually some pretty decent built-in audio, and of course it's got a headphone jack on the front that makes it easy to connect to either headphones or some speakers, but very easy. All you're using this monitor for is just video, and it's 1920 by 1200. It's a great resolution for this size. I think that's the perfect resolution for a 23-inch monitor, and as with every Apple monitor, it's going to have great color, and it just looks great. So one connection USB-C to DVI, boom, you've got one monitor working. Now, I mentioned before this was a $2,000 monitor when it came out. Today, I find these for $50 sometimes, sometimes as low as $30 or $40, sometimes as high as $100. But I would say if you could find it in that $50 to $75 range, I would much rather have this than a $80 monitor from maybe Walmart or Best Buy, you know, 1920 by 1080 monitor. Very plasticky, very cheap, probably a lot more energy efficient, but... This just looks great, right? You get the nice little silver Mac Mini, nice little silver monitor. It's a perfect pairing if you ask me. Now moving over to the 27 inch. On this side, we've got the 27 inch. Remember I said this is the Apple Cinema Display, not the Thunderbolt monitor or Thunderbolt display. And that's important because that matters what kind of adapter that you need. So very similar, I've got an adapter back here. It's this black cord that comes to this connector right here. And coming off of this connector, off the monitor, again, we have a couple connections. This one right here is the mini display port. And you can tell that by this little picture right here in the end. If it looks kind of like a monitor, if you look at that, it looks kind of like a monitor. Then this is the display port or the mini display port model, which makes this the Apple Cinema Display. 
if it's got like a lightning bolt on there, then that is the Thunderbolt port, and that makes that the Thunderbolt display. Same exact looking connector. If I took this out, it'd look exactly the same, but the little silk screen on there is what makes the difference. So in this case, I've got a connector here, an adapter which is just USB-C to mini display port, and this will work with Thunderbolt 3 or 4. So it's USB-C, but it is using USB 3 or 4 data. So in the back of your Mac Mini here, of course, that's Thunderbolt 4. And again, this just works. So you're going to get video and audio off of this. And the audio is going to go right to this monitor and the speakers are just going to work. Now we'll take a look at that in just a second because there is possibly something you have to play with to make the speaker volume work. But I'll show you that in just a second. Continuing on with the connectors on the back of here. We also have the MacBook charger, so the MagSafe connector. We don't need that in this case. If you had a MacBook hooked up, I've got some examples on another video of how to hook this up to a more modern power delivery type MacBook. So one of the M1 or M2 MacBook Pros, you can still use this to charge those, but we're not worried about that in this video. And then on the last connector, we have a USB-A connector, and I've got that just going through a USB-A to USB-C adapter which in this case is just a little plug. It could be a little cable like this. It would work just the same, USB-A on one side, USB-C on the other. And really I think the only thing you need this USB for is to make the EyeSight camera work. So when I didn't have this cable hooked up, the audio worked through this monitor, but the camera didn't. And as soon as I hooked that up, it just started working. So let's take a look at that volume again and I'll show you what I was talking about. All right, so for this demonstration, I've got some stream beats playing over here. Thanks to Harris Heller for some royalty free music to play. And right now I've just got the audio coming out of the Mac mini, so I'll turn that up. Like I said, it doesn't sound bad. And I'm using the keys on the keyboard. I can control that volume. And I can control that also up in the control center. So I'm going to go over to this monitor here, just so we can see it easy. So we've got the sound here, and I've got a volume bar that I can actually adjust. Now when I plugged in this monitor, it defaulted to an audio source that's called, right here, Display Audio. Now when I first hooked up this cable here for this monitor, it defaulted to LED Cinema, and now the audio is coming through here but I have no control. In fact, if you can see on this screen here, when I hit the volume key, it shows a zero with the slash through it. And if I look back up here, then there is no slider. It's just, it's just there. And since there's no volume buttons on the monitor, I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> this isn't good. But if I go back to my sources, there's one that's called display audio. And now I've got a volume slider and I can slide that volume up and down here. and it is coming out this monitor and I can use the keys here to control that volume also. So I'm not sure why both of those sources show up because it's definitely not showing up for this. This isn't the LED or the display monitor audio. It's definitely coming out here, but luckily one of them works and it works great. And of course, if you've ever used one of these monitors before, you know how good the speakers are on it. It sounds great. So last thing we're gonna test out we're going to test out the EyeSight camera, and like I said, having that USB cable plugged in there, it worked out just fine. So if I bring up Photo Booth, I'm just going to throw this big box in front of the camera so you don't have to stare at me. And there we go. Works great. Before I had this plugged in, before I had that USB cable plugged in with that USB-C to USB-A adapter, it said on the screen here, right in the middle, plug in camera to use Photo Booth. So... It works good. So we got two monitors hooked up, a 2005 model and a 2010 model, looking great, working great to our brand new Mac Mini M4. And I said, if you stuck around to the end, we'll try out one more thing. Well, what I'm gonna try out is we still have the HDMI port back here that we're not using. So I'm gonna grab a HDMI portable monitor and plug it in there along with all this other stuff and see what happens. All right, so it's starting to get a little messy here, but I got it all working. And here it is, here's a third monitor, that's just an HDMI portable monitor, going straight, HDMI cable right here, right into this monitor. And these are not mirrored, I'll show you that here by taking this window. And as I drag this over, there's monitor number two. If I keep on going, 
we got monitor number three. Of course, you can go into the display settings and drag them around to whatever angles and configurations that you want. But we've got three monitors being driven off of this Mac Mini, and it's virtually plug and play. It just works. Get the right adapters for the two old monitors, straight up HDMI for your newer monitors, and you are good to go. I've actually got this monitor right here plugged into the front for power. You wouldn't have to do that. You could use just a regular power supply, of course, or if you've got a regular non-portable monitor, it's going to be plugged into the wall, but it's neat that I can have that just extra cable go in there just to give it power and not have to worry about another power brick. So let me know what kind of questions you have about this configuration. I'm happy to help you out any way that I can. Also, go ahead and take a second to go down to those comments and let me know what kind of screen configuration you got set up for your new Mac Mini. But I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope it was helpful to you. If it was, I appreciate a thumbs up. Like I said, go check out the rest of the channel. You'll find other examples of me taking old stuff and hooking it up to new stuff and making it work. But that's going to do it. I appreciate you for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.